So, Stu, what is the strength of the left that we don't have? Uh, lack of shame. <laughs> no, I think we're getting there. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. We, we don't have that. Okay. Um, uh, that's, that's an interesting one. I mean, I think I, I watch these back and forths all the time. Mm-hmm. And there is an ability that the left has uh, that they don't seem to care at all. Like, uh, you know, give me give you a high level example here. The Supreme Court the other day, you know, they... Uh, um, Sotomayor is like, you just, you, you, I mean, I can't believe you'd come yeah. back here and just overturn a case like right. this. There is, there is absolute precedent when these things happen. I and mean, you can't just be changing them all the time. And then you go back and look at her personal history where she, uh, two years after Heller is decided on the second amendment th- votes to overturn it mm-hmm. uh, within the Chicago case. Like the, there, I don't know. Like I have a thing in me. I think you have this thing in you. I do. That, like, there's an internal pull when you realize, oh, my gosh, am I going down a hypocritical road of some sort? Mm-hmm. You know, am, am and I, you don't always see it. Yeah. But they seem it. to never they see it. They seem to never see it. And never I think maybe they do see it and adjust power right through it, which is something I don't know. It okay. does happen on the right, but it's way so, more common on the left. I think you could look in an evil way as that as being a skill of theirs or a talent or <laughs> okay. a, yes. an asset. But that's kind of an evil thing. Sure. They actually have, they've mastered something that we can't find our butt, uh, you know, if it was right in front of us. Mm-hmm. And that is storytelling. Mm. We suck at storytelling we suck at telling the american story we suck at i mean you're a religious guy Mm -hmm. i know you've seen the really bad christian movies (laughs) right where if where the whole intent is somebody saying let's see if we can bring the audience to jesus yeah like it's it's ham-handed right uh, right and it's always like you know, the very last scene, it's somebody that says, I want to be baptized. I'm a Christian now. I understand the power of Jesus Christ in my life. And you're like, okay. okay. And now everything's wonderful and I have right. no more problems. It's as th- they are right. as bad as, <laughs> I mean, they make the Hallmark Channel look good yes. and surprising. Now, some of them have improved over the years. No, yeah, but, no, no, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Mm-hmm. That's the way we've always been. Yes. But we're getting better at that now Mm -hmm. because the only one that ever got this in the old days was Mel Gibson with The Passion of the Christ. Okay? Right. That was just a great movie. And he knew the secret is make a great movie. So what we've always done is we've always said make a point. Get people to open their eyes well, that's not a great movie, okay? And and so it fails. Have you seen the Santa thing that is on HBO with Silver, Sarah Silverman and uh, what's the other guy? Um, Seth Rogen. No. Okay. Nobody will. It is horrible, okay? <laughs> it's claymation. It's a series. I don't even know how many episodes it is. It's just foul, but the... But the the storyline is, why isn't there a female Santa? And it's just woke bullcrap, mm-hmm. okay? Not funny, not entertaining. They're just expecting people to watch it because it's claymation, okay? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's right on the tip of everyone's tongue right now. Okay. I want to watch more claymation. Claymation, okay. So, well, it's Christmas and it's Santa claymation, sure. so you're like, ah, oh, the kids will love it. But it's just vile, yeah. just vile. And it's... Just a commercial for wokeism. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, you were talking to me about Leonardo DiCaprio's new movie. Yes. What's it called? Um, I don't know. Is it Don't Look Up? Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's about uh, an asteroid coming to Earth. And it's got everybody who's anybody in it. Yeah. And it's produced by Adam McKay, who's like Will Ferrell's partner. He does, you know, Succession and, you know, all the big, all these big movies. And so it's a big project. Now, the thing that, that thought went through my mind when I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, wow, this looks good. Oh, it's going to be a message movie, but it looks pretty good. And then I saw Meryl Streep and I went, okay, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, um, you said yesterday 
it's going to be a stupid message movie, but it looks like it's got the right people in it to still be good. It could be, yeah, it looks like it's a good, a well done project. Uh, you know, even though, so you think it might be funny, uh, even mm-hmm. though it's, they're making some dumb global warming point. Film critics are saying it's smug, shrill, Whoa. and obvious. Really? Yeah. That's um, encouraging. Th- here the filmmaker has stumbled too far from the path, and he can no longer see the forest for the trees. He's created a smug, shrill, obvious satire that has nothing to say other than humanity is screwed. But see, even the critic says it has nothing to say. They have become us, and we are becoming them. Mm. We are finally getting, you gotta tell a good story. Leave it at that. Don't push the horse's face in the water. Hey, water's over there. And make it an entertaining trip. And let them decide to do something with it. There's... I watch movie after movie, and this is this has been one of their strengths. You'll watch movie after movie, and you will see the subtle softening of things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's it's not like an anti-smoking movie. It's just they've taken smoking out. Uh, it's not a hey, everybody should have sex. It's just shows that you're everybody is having sex before they get married. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and they'll it, admit that for the things that they, you know, correct. If you say like, oh, you're trying to slip in this propaganda, they'll deny it initially. And then 20 correct. years later, there's a documentary about how, yeah, oh, absolutely. That right. was, that's what we were doing. But in their arrogance and in their crazy desperation, they think we'll put up with it. We're already out of the movie theaters. We're already on it. And the only thing that needed to happen was other people making a good product that entertained us. That's around the corner from the right. We are winning on so many fronts. We are, it's going to be a race against the clock. But we, they know they're in trouble, but they also don't know. They, they, they are as blind as we were. I mean, I, I remember seeing these movies and sitting in movie theaters because I'm a big movie fan and I'd watch these Christian movies and I'd be like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why, why, why? You didn't need to go that far and you would have been able to get a bigger audience and they would have been able to see it. And now we're starting to do that. And now we're going to be the good storytellers and they are just so convinced they're right and they're so freaked out that and so arrogant that they're just going to come out and say it they're in a losing position and the power is about to flip and i think that is really great news 